Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cameron Patterson, and I have the pleasure of serving as executive director here at the Robert Russell Moton Museum. And we are so excited for the return of our Moton Monday series. Uh, this is a series curated by the staff here at the Moton Museum that features topics related to um, American history, related to the Moton story, related to our local Farmville community. And so we are so excited today to have Dr. Latasha Foster, uh, who is a lecturer of history in the Department of History, Political Science and Philosophy at Longwood University. Uh, Dr. Foster has also been supporting the Longwood University Bicentennial Initiative, which has been focused on elevating um, underrepresented stories within the Longwood community. And she's also been helping uh, with our team here at the Moton Museum in a number of different areas. And so Dr. Foster, we are so excited to have you for today's Moton Monday series, focus on uh, 20th century nursing uh, here within the Farmville community. Um, again, Dr. Latasha Foster is a lecturer of US history uh, focusing on African-American history, medical history, health disparities, and women and gender issues. And so Dr. Foster, welcome. Um, and I am excited to turn things over to you uh, for your presentation on 20th century African-American women in nursing. Thank you. Okay, the topic of 20th century African American women in nursing. In 1910, there were about 1,100 nursing schools, but no school really accepted African Americans in the field of nursing training, very few. Nor, nowhere was there greater need for African American nurses than in the South. Barriers to um, black women entering the nursing profession was advocated by African-American physicians. They encouraged nurses to train. They opened nursing training schools, formal nursing training schools. In addition, communities recognized the need to have trained nurses within predominantly um, African-American communities. Here in Farmville, we're going to discuss the contribution of four African American nurses in Farmville, Virginia. Our first nurse is Mrs. Rebecca L. Early. Mrs. Early was a nurse midwife. We are also going to discuss Mrs. Nellie Coles, a registered nurse, Colonel Martha Stokes Cleveland, a registered nurse and Doris Thompson Ward, a licensed vocational nurse. Rebecca Early began her nursing career as a nurse midwife early in her uh, life. At the age of 17, she became a nurse midwife in 1897. She had 50 years of service here in the Prince Edward County area of Farmville, Virginia. Mrs. Early, Nurse Early was recognized as an important member of the health care team in Farmville. She died and her family wanted to pay their respects and to un allow an understanding of the contribution that Miss Early had for Farmville. On her burial tombstone, our mother, Rebecca Lewis Early, midwife. We next have Nellie M. Coles. Ms. Coles was affectionately known as Nurse Coles throughout the Commonwealth of Virginia. She received a degree in nursing from Hampton University in Hampton, Virginia. She was the first African-American public health nurse with the Virginia Department of Health. Okay. Doris Thompson Ward was another nurse. She was a licensed vocational nurse. 
She was interested in nursing after working with two physicians in the farm field area. As a matriarch, she wanted to assist her family. In 1959, she enrolled in a licensed vocational nursing training program at the Medical College of Virginia. She worked her nursing career at Southside Hospital. She also served as a school nurse at Prince Edward County School District. Colonel Martha Stokes Cleveland. She completed her nursing training at St. Philip's Hospital Nursing School in Richmond, Virginia in 1943. 1962, she pursued her Bachelor's of Science degree, graduating from Hampton University in Hampton, Virginia. In 1944, she enlisted in the Army. She was trained in Wisconsin, served in the Army Nurse Corps. In 1974, she retired with the rank as a full colonel. Part of her training as a nurse took her overseas, Japan, Korea, Europe, Germany, Thailand, statewide. She um, was stationed at Fort Hood, Fort Bragg, Fort Lee, and Fort Dix. She received numerous medals, including the National Defense Service Medal, the Meritorious Unit Service Plaque, Korean Service Medal, and the Vietnam Service Medal. Most important for the African-American women in farm field, their community activism. They have a history of racial uplift in farm field. Some of the community contributions include Nurse Rebecca Early, the midwife, again, beginning her career at 17 years old. She delivered 250 babies, never lost a mother or a child. She was honored with 50 years of nursing service. Nurse Nellie Coles. Nellie Coles had 38 years of service. She was a member of the Southside Community Hospital Auxiliary Committee. She also was a volunteer of the Prince Edward Unit of the American Cancer Society. She participated and assisted in organizing Meals on Wheels for senior citizens in Prince Edward County. For her contributions to public health, Nellie Coles established a preschool clinic. She was green children not only in the Prince Edward community, but also schools, um, New Bethel, Mount Lee. She served as a volunteer and a nurse consultant for the Prince Edward Tuberculosis Committee and also the Lung Board. She also represented um, nursing in the field of mental health. She was a member of the Piedmont Mental Health Board. She was also part of the Prince Edward County Electoral Board. She served at treasurer as a treasurer for the Southside Community Hospital Auxiliary. Again, she participated in community activism. She served at, as a deaconess for First Baptist Church for over 50 years. She also transported local community members and friends and families who didn't have transportation to doctor's appointments, business appointments. She also helped sponsor the American Red Cross Blood Mobile. She was a recipient of several awards, which will be discussed later. Those include the State Honor for Community Service Awards. Doris Ward Thompson, another member of the Martha E. Forrest Council for Women. Both Nellie Coles and Doris Thompson served on the Council for Women. The Council for Women was an organization, part of the Virginia State Federation of Colored Women. Their motto, consistent with Club women at that time lifting as we climb. The club women met and the council of women met at various venues, sometimes at Calvary Baptist Church, 
the first Baptist church in Farmville. Nurse Thompson often hosted the meetings of the Council of Women. She again was a board member actively participating in her community. She was a board member of the Prince Edward Community Recreation Center. She also attended the 1984 State Federation of Colored Women. The 1984 meeting celebrated the 65th anniversary of the Martha E. Ford Council of Women here in Farmville. She also was able to participate in the 75th anniversary of the Virginia State Federation of Colored Women. The members of the Martha E. Forrest Council of Women celebrated their 70th anniversary, 1989. They celebrated at, at Longwood University. Martha E. Martha Stokes Cleveland, she was a community activist. Over 32 years of nursing, she was a mentor. She also volunteered for the Red Cross. She returned to Farmville after serving in the military. She was received state recognition for her service. She, along with Nellie Coles, received the Unsung Virginia Award, both honored for state community service for the state of Virginia, both women being formed from Farmville. They were also part of the award. Again, two different individuals receiving state honor for community activism. Going back to the Martha E. Forrest Council of Women, these are women who embrace the need for community service in addition to their roles as nursing. Part of the council's 60th anniversary, for anniversary they wanted to focus on African-Americans in Farmville. Their effort, number one, they wanted to furnish systems that would afford uplift for African-Americans African within the community. They also wanted to improve educational advances for African-Americans in the community, community. They wanted to secure this sort of harmony of action and cooperation among all people in Farmville. They wanted to improve the home life, the morals and the civil life of African-Americans. They wanted to administer to the less fortunate in the community. As nurses, they coined a key term that's very important. They demonstrated a spirit of volunteerism, volunteering, chaperoning students for presentations, assisting with care vanning, cancer screening. They also participated in this sort of enrichment um, of citizens in the South Side um, part of Virginia. These women were strong advocates for health services in Virginia. As African American nurses in Farmville, they had a balance of active and community and being active in church. Many reloading relocated to Farmville after attending college, after obtaining their degrees. The trials they faced in a segregated society, racial issues were prominent. For example, Doris Ward spoke of working in a hospital. African-American nurses could only take care of African-American patients. It was a hospital that was segregated there was also pay discrimination. With all that going on, these women still returned to the community and they gave back to their community. Interviewing the members of the Ward family, I asked them to describe something important, words that would describe their mother's contribution as a nurse in Farmville. 
word that came to mind, sacrifice. She had to sacrifice two years. There were no nursing schools close in the area to farm field that would allow their mom to attend class, obtain a degree. She had to relocate to Richmond, live apart from her family to complete her education in nursing. She only came home during the weekend. She had a commitment to love and family. The women here in Farmville are similar to African-American nurses in other cities. Many of the Farmville nurses too, at least attended St. Philip's School of Nursing in Richmond, Virginia. Looking through some of the primary sources or historical records for the nursing school, St. Philip's Nursing School was, was a part of the Medical College of Virginia. African-American women came from New York, Connecticut, South Carolina, Maryland, Louisiana, North Carolina, West Virginia, as far as Oklahoma, parts of Colorado, Alabama, and Florida to receive their education as nurses. Again, in this segregated community, these nurses thrived. They were prideful women. They embraced the idea of giving back, whether they worked in hospitals, public health, whether they were nurse midwives, or whether they were school-based nurses. They saw a need to serve their community, and they did so lovingly. Dr. Foster, uh, we thank you for that um, intimate look it, into what uh, nursing was like here in Farmville uh, through the lens of four dynamic individuals that gave so much to our local community. Uh, we stand on the legacy of each of those women. Um, and as we close out Women's History Month, uh, what a fantastic way to do so. Uh, by taking a look at those four individuals. Um, my question, um, if, if, you know, to you, um, how does this, uh, you know, in learning about those four ladies and what nursing was like here in Farmville, how does it compare to some of your prior research um, in other areas, particularly Memphis, um, Tennessee, which had a robust medical uh, training college. The results are similar. The reason the women advocated for nursing schools, for example, here at St. Phillips, there were 30 African American patients who were housed in a basement of a memorial hospital that was closing. Based on the need of the African American uh, patients in a community, there was a need for more nursing services. Basically, the idea of segregated facilities, many did not admit African Americans into their hospitals, clinics. Nursing emerged with the assistance of physicians who recognized the need in Memphis. They also established nursing schools. These nurses nursing schools had the primary focus of training and educating African-American nurses to advocate for their community, to provide education, to work in various settings of nurses. We had public health nurses similar here. We also had hospital trained nurses, and we saw nurses who really understood the diversity and complexity of health care. Tuberculosis was part of a disease that was rampant in the African-American community. And here we see Nurse Coles volunteering to provide public health service, to serve on the committee, to provide education, to provide teaching, to go out into the communities. These nurses also here in Farmer were similar to the ones in Memphis, providing home care as well as clinic-based 
and hospital care. Thank you for that. Uh, my next question, uh, you know, when you talk about uh, Ms. Early, um, I just, you know, looking at the work that she did, particularly with the delivery of over 250 um, young babies within this community, um, you know, what was it like just kind of learning about the impact that she made within that area? I think that was very interesting because the person who told me she delivered her, she mentioned that uh, at that particular time, African-American women in Farmville had a nurse midwife. The majority of uh, patients within a particular age group was delivered by this nurse midwife. She would go to the home, pre provide prenatal care do the education and also deliver. I think for Nurse Early being a midwife, she, counter, she counters the argument that midwives were harmful. They caused uh, infant mortality. They were not as careful as physicians. And here she is with a 50 year career as a midwife delivering children, taking care of the women as well as the infants and also her legacy as a nurse just the understanding of a mother who had uh, instilled in her children the understanding of her contributions as noted on their on her tombstone headstone nurse early had 30 grandchildren 32 great grandchildren and nine great, great grandchildren. So as a nurse here in Farmville, she also established her family here. It wasn't that these women worked, drove out of the community. They all provided a service and remained here. And her contributions as a nurse midwife are incredible. Thank you for that. I know you've had a great opportunity, uh, particularly speaking with um, some members of the Ward family. Um, can you maybe describe just a little bit of, you know, what they observed by way of potential discrimination that um, their family members faced? I know you had mentioned uh, pay disparities as one element of discrimination, but um, I know it was not an easy time to uh, rise within the healthcare ranks. Yes, and I think uh, the family openly shares some of the things their mother discussed, pay discrepancies, the fact that, um, you know, you were on a segregated unit, you could only take care of certain patients. There was little room for advancement within the uh, acute care or hospital setting. But she was really rewarded and her light shined when she left the hospital, worked in the community, especially with school children, especially when um, the school system closed. She was there to help with immunizations, to care for children, to accompany them, to provide nursing service. So for some of the nurses, especially the ones we're talking about here in Farmfield, their calling was more of community public health uh, service versus the um, rewards that some nurses get for working at the bedside. Their um, calling was more for this need to help children in their communities older adults in their community, the disabled, delivering meals, cooking for them, uh, developing Meals on Wheels program, and for two nurses to receive state honor for volunteer of the year, uh, that speaks um, a high volume for dedicated, hardworking nurses. I've got a question that has come in, and uh, I think it's a really neat question. Uh, you know, when you think about um, the education and medical credentials for these four women, um, 
what do you think that meant in terms of their ability to be leaders within the community, um, especially the activism role uh, they would take on? Um, and do you think it likely gave confidence to others that might follow behind them? Yes, I think for the nurses um, that we're discussing, many of the nurses pursued their bachelor's degree, which was exciting at that time. Barriers to regular nurses, to the licensed vocational nurses, to the two-year college graduate nurses. But these nurses pursued a, uh, a bachelor's degree. Colonel um, Cleveland, the idea of using her nursing going, entering the military, serving, but coming back to return to Farmville, her activism, still connecting to nursing. She served as part of the American Cancer Society, the Red Cross. These women serve as role models. The difficulty in navigating systems that are closed based on race and the ability for them to continue to train to want to do more. It's a, a positive and it's remarkable at that time for them to complete nursing training. That's amazing. Um, you know, the Stokes family uh, has such a powerful connection, um, you know, with John Stokes, her brother, Mm -hmm. And um, her sister Carrie Stokes being a part of the student student strike yes. uh, and the student strike committee, and um, I know so many folks speak highly of all of the nurses, but you know I'll often hear a lot about um, Colonel Cleveland and you know just how um, you know she was an inspiration to community members with uh, some of the etiquette classes and courses that she would do and you know she was uh, such a giving individual uh, you know particularly as it related to um, the development of educators so again we are very fortunate to stand on the shoulders of these um, four women um, you know it, i find it pretty interesting when you mentioned the bachelor piece uh, it that to me seems like it was kind of ahead of its time yes mm -hmm. in some ways in terms of you know you know I, I think now a lot of colleges have programs where you can go back to add the bachelor piece yes if you've already gotten your nursing certification but it seems like they were kind of ahead of their time yes. in terms of pursuing that Yes, and the idea that certain schools didn't allow African Americans to enter. So when we look at bachelor programs, we're looking at very few that admitted African Americans and the connection between the idea of wanting to enter a nursing field, the idea of the sacrifice it takes, again, when you're traveling from Oklahoma to Colorado, moving in with people, staying with people, not being assured uh, what's going on, but the idea that advancing the nursing career is very positive. You know, the idea that African American nurses can achieve a higher level bachelor yeah. degrees are attainable. I know you do a you did a a lot of your uh, research in the Memphis area. Um, can you talk for a moment about the, there's a medical school that you reference as part of that research. Can you talk about that school and its significance yes. within the African-American community there? Mm -hmm. I did the African-American medical school that I focus primarily on is the University of West Tennessee. That school was founded initially in Jackson, Tennessee, and then it moved to Memphis, Tennessee. In Tennessee, there was this collaboration between doctors who went to Mayor Harry and moving to Memphis, wanting to 
understand the need to take care of large populations of African Americans. Dr. Miles B. Link was also one of the co-founders of the National Medical Association, which is the African American branch of the American Medical Association since African American doctors were not admitted into that organization. So here we have a physician who begins a national organization for African American doctors and also the desire to develop a medical school. And his medical school was not just training physicians, doctors, dentists, pharmacists. He had a medical school where his goal was to train all of those. He opened his medical school and moved to Memphis, I believe in 1907, and stayed open through 1921 or 1923. The closure of a lot of African-American schools nationwide, along with women's medical colleges, had to do with the issues of race, racism, class, uh, different reports. Flexner Report is one. But this medical school, however, for Dr. Miles Feeling, he trained doctors, he trained nurses, he had a pharmacy school. He and a lot of other physicians collaborated. They had surgical nursing training. Doctors from Nashville, Meharry relocated to Memphis. They were clinical educators. They had hospitals. They opened up training hospitals. One was uh, the Terrell Memorial, Jane Terrell Memorial Hospital. They also trained and opened African-American nursing schools, Collins Chapel. A lot of the hospitals are also faith-based organizations embracing the understanding and the strong connection between church and community, especially in a lot of African-American communities. And the University of Tennessee was one such medical school. Thank you for sharing that. Um, just, you know, I just amazing to think about the strength um, within the Black medical community um, mm -hmm. at institutions such as that. But you know, even to think about the strength of the Black medical community uh, within Farmville, mm -hmm. uh, with the four individuals that we um, have spoken about during this presentation. And so, um, Dr. Foster, those are all the questions that I have. Okay. And I just want to thank you for helping us to shed a light on 20th century nursing within the Farmville Prince Edward community. Um, and to those that have joined us for today's Moten Live presentation, this presentation will live permanently via our Moten Museum YouTube page. So youtube.com slash forward slash Moten Museum. And we look forward to sharing uh, details regarding our next Moten Mondays program. So thank you all and have a great afternoon.